Hello, everyone. Thanks for giving me this opportunity. I want to talk about a course called Quantum Information. This is a course for master students, two focus areas, algorithm design and security. And with this course in the next semester, we want to bring more quantum into our department. To discuss more, let's first talk about time. You know, back then in 18th and 19th century, we had the uh, Industrial Revolution, and then moving through time, in 20th century, we had the Information Technology Revolution. We could build classical computers. That nowadays, we use these classical computers and our classical phone in our daily life. And then later on, moving through time, we want to have quantum technology revolution. We want to build quantum computers and quantum devices and use them in our daily life. Talking about time and quantum, we should remember that quantum mechanics is almost 100 years old. Many people work in this area. They have a lot of discoveries. And because of their work, we know a lot. But even though quantum mechanics is almost 100 years old, but it remains alive and contains a lot of open and challenging problems. Open problems like quantum computing, data storage, quantum network, quantum algorithms, secret sharing, teleportation, and so on and so forth. And then when we talk about quantum mechanics, we should also compare it with classical mechanics to see why we expect to have more advantage whenever we use quantum devices. One big difference between classical mechanics and quantum mechanics is superposition. Classical physics, we have classical bits or just bits. In quantum mechanics, we can call them quantum bits or just qubits for short. To discuss more, let's first consider one small example. We can have a photonic system that photon goes through the upper slit. We can represent it by cat zero or state zero or just bit zero. If that photon goes through the lower slit, we can just label it by state one or cat one or just bit one. This is very similar to what we have in classical physics, but then in quantum, we can have this situation that we don't know whether a photon is going through the upper slit or is going through the lower slit. So we have a superposition. In my example, I'm taking equal weighted superposition. So the weight of getting zero and the weight of getting one are equal because these two coefficients are equal. So we can have superposition when we have quantum bits. One other difference between quantum mechanic and classical mechanic is measurement. Whenever we have a, a classical system, we can just do the measurement and the results are not probabilistic, they are certain and we don't change the system. But in quantum mechanics, the results are probabilistic. So we start from a quantum system in a superposition like this system that we have in here. We do the measurement and with probability P1, for example, we get a spin up or cat zero. And with probability P2, another probability, we get a spin down or cat one. So the results are not certain. And also the system change. So we started from a system with superposition, we end up with no, super, no superposition. So we see the system change. Another big difference between quantum mechanics and classical mechanics is called no cloning. In classical physics, we can have a paper some contain some information. We can just make as many as copies that we want it without even reading that paper. We can have an SMS, we can make a copy of it or send it to someone else. We can have an email and we can also do the same, reply or forward it without reading it. But in quantum mechanics, if we know a quantum system, we can make a copy. But if we don't know it, we don't have information, we cannot copy it. We cannot clone it. This is the core difference between classical error correcting and quantum error correcting codes. We cannot clone if the quantum uh, state is unknown. One other big difference between quantum mechanics and classical mechanics is that is entanglement. In quantum physics, we can have entanglement, but we don't have such notion in classical physics. But in order to have entanglement in quantum physics, we need to have two quantum systems or more than two quantum systems. With one quantum system, we cannot have entanglement. Like classical physics, we also cannot have entanglement at all. So when, let's consider the simplest case, two qubits, here we have four configuration, 
one configuration is that both spin are up or both of them are cat zero. One other configuration is one up another up down or the other way around. And uh, the first configuration is that both spins are down or both of them are cat zero in one. And we know in two body system, we have one maximally entangled state also called bell state. That is a superposition between the situation that both spins are up, both spins are down. So we have cat zero zero and cat one one. Again, we need to have two coefficients here, but whenever these two coefficients are equal, so we have equal weighted superposition, we don't write them down so that we get a more compact form of this thing. So here we have equal weighted superposition between the situation that both spins are up and both spins are down. Then we have a maximally entangled state. But then what about more than two system, more than two quantum system? Again, let's consider example. We have one configuration that all of the spins are up or all of them are labeled by cat zero. Another configuration is that all of them are up except the very first one. So we have one and the rest are zero. These two configuration can be in superposition. Another configuration is that all of them are spin up. The second one is a spin down. So all of these three configuration can be in superposition. We can imagine we have a number of these configurations that all can be in a superposition until the very last configuration that all of the spins are down or all of them are cat one. So when we deal with many body system, we have exponentially large uh, number of the terms, many configuration that we have in, in the middle. So dealing with many body system is difficult, but yet it brings a lot of advantage when we want to get application or the one of Bill's quantum devices. So talking about many body system, we have a number of open questions in this area. For example, what is the maximally entangled state? In two body system, we had one maximally entangled state, Bell state. Here we don't have one maximally entangled state, we have a number of them. Then how to classify these states? Which one is more useful when we deal and talk about quantum application? And then how to find and construct these states? We need to use quantum algorithm to construct them, to find them. So in general, entanglement is very important because it's a core um, of a, a long number of the major and uh, the number of the majors are related and dependent on the entanglement. For example, quantum error correcting codes. Another example is quantum network. In the end of the day, we have a number of quantum um, computers or quantum devices, and we want to connect them together. For example, we want to have quantum internet. So we need to discuss and work on quantum network. Also quantum algorithms to find the states, to find the connection and to find quantum network. Also, we need to know what we need uh, in experiment. So what uh, devices that we already have, how to get better devices and how to theoretically help experimentalist people. So in general, quantum information is a revolutionary direction to investigate future information technologies we want to have quantum computing, we want to discuss it, studying it, and also we want to build quantum computers. Also, we know quantum information can also perform its classical counterpart, can have quantum secret sharing, teleportation, not even teleporting one particle, we want to teleport many body system and number of the particles at the same time. And also we want to have quantum networks. And we know that this uh, area is related to many areas like quantum computer science, mathematics, and physics. Talking about the quantum information course, the content is uh, entanglement of two and many body systems. So when we have a number of the quantum system, application of the um, quantum information and the devices, and also measurement of the entanglement, like distance, fidelity, and so on. And Similar to what we have in classical physics, we have classical bits and classical dits. In quantum mechanics, we also have quantum bits and quantum dits. We call them Q dits. So we have cat zero and cat one or spin up and spin down. We can have a number of them. We can have situation that we have cat zero, cat one, cat two, and cat three, and so on. We call them Q dits. Also to discuss about quantum channels, 
how to correct them, how, on what kind of state we can stand and so on. And also classical and quantum error correcting codes. When we want to send information which is in a superposition instead of sending just classical information. So thanks for your attention. Let's bring more quantum uh, with the quantum information course. And here you can see the rest of the information. Many thanks.